Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Oddities video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one yet again based on one of your newer suggestions. When I was looking up the information of this suggestion, it actually gave me another Mandela Effect moment. I thought to myself, I could have sworn I had talked about this before, a couple of years back. But try as I might, I couldn't find the other video, or maybe actually now that I think about it, it was probably more on the lines of a loose variation of it, and that's why I'm thinking that I talked about it before, but if someone knows which video it was, then please post it in the comments below. But yes, this one has to do with a strange phenomenon that occurs even to this day throughout multiple parts of the world. It's been happening for a good number of centuries, has been documented for a good number of centuries. No one seems to have an idea exactly as to what it is. And it could be because there isn't really one single answer. Instead, it's a multitude of answers, but all falling under the same category of what this thing is. In fact, you're looking at a representation of it now. It goes by various terms, but at least the most commonly one is the star jelly. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating info associated with whatever this weird substance is, and then I'll give my own explanations and thoughts as to what it could be as well. So here's essentially what astral jelly or star jelly is. It does have various names. Again, it could be star jelly. It could be astral jelly. I've seen other variations of it of being called star slime, star slubber. I mean, it's just star fallen. It just continues when it comes to uh, what this term is. But yes, even in other cultures, it has its own different versions and names. For example, in Mexico, it's known as Caca de Luna, which literally translates to the moon's excrement. Fascinating stuff, right? When it comes to different cultures having at least different types of names, right? When it comes to the same stuff. But as to what it is exactly, again, there's no 100% solid universal type of of, of definition for it. Instead, the most common thing associated with it is it's a weird jelly, gelatinous type substance that is very commonly found either on the ground, it could be concrete, or most likely in places involving grass or branches or trees. That's where people seem to find it whenever they uh, come across it. And it's usually in either small packs or it could be as you'll know in a couple of minutes with some of the um, encounters, it could be actually several feet across, very large in other words. And at least the thing that distinguishes star jelly from other type of material out there is the fact that anytime people touch it or come across it or try to inspect it, it for whatever reason tends to evaporate very shortly after it quote unquote fell from the sky. So that's why it still remains a big mystery to this day because it's very hard to try to study it because of the way it just dissolves afterward and it practically just disappears. How it looks like too has a whole different variation of, 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 of encounters. People have seen it be a translucent. So in other words, you could see through it. Others have stated that it comes in various colors from yellowish to greenish to orange as well. Uh, grayish, whitish as well has also been interpreted. And they even have little strands of hair on them or in other cases they look like little strands as well. It could be a giant blob. It could be something like a blot. Like in other words, as if it completely did fall from the sky and then just fell into several pieces. It could be chunky. It could be solid. It could also be something along the lines of very, very um, uh, gelatinous, like I was mentioning earlier, where you try to hold it, but it's very hard to do so. It just pretty much moves in all different places. It's just a whole different set of things as to what this star jelly is. Again, uh, there really is no 100% answer to it. There just seems to be so many examples. But as far as documented sightings and what people have stated, somewhere along the way, people just started tying this idea that something was coming from the sky, either from the clouds themselves or in other cases from meteors and meteor showers. And whatever was falling ended up being this star jelly. For example, there was a guy by the name of John of Agadiston. I hope I'm saying it correctly. John of Gadiston. He stated back in around the 1300s, maybe even into the 1200s, 
that he was describing this as star of the earth or earth star when it came to his own medical writings. In fact, that could have been one of the earliest known indications of what this star jelly is. And in other cases, other people described it as well. Um, there was a medical glossary from the 14th century that stated it was a fatty substance emitted from the earth. Makes you give the idea that maybe this was actually coming from inside the earth, almost as if it was being spewed out, like the let's say a volcano, the way it just spews out that type of lava. Maybe this stuff was coming from inside the earth, and then it makes it appear as it falls back down that it's coming from the stars and so on. So that's yet another entry associated with that. Even the Oxford English Dictionary has some references of it going back to the 1440s as well. Interesting stuff, right? You would think that this type of of, of, of encounters dating back several centuries, we would have a more set of concrete answers. But no, for somewhere along the way, people just started linking the idea that it was coming from the stars and the heavens themselves, and it just pretty much stuck. And then that's why, again, the colloquial term tends to be star jelly. But yes, even there's this. There's the idea that it could also be of extraterrestrial origin. The notion that maybe something else is bringing this type over the heavens, our heavens, in other words, and letting it fall to the earth. Is it a UFO? that's doing it or is it something else extraterrestrial again that's just another theory and then there's also this there's even the idea that it could be of paranormal status the notion that something else out there from another realm wherever the ghosts and spirits roam they're bringing this type of stuff here you kind of hear that with the word ectoplasm right the, the uh, you've if you've heard that term in the world of paranormal you know that it's a weird substance that apparently can be emitted from ghosts or ghostly encounters makes one wonder if this star jelly is also linked to that type of ectoplasm too and then finally there's this there's the notion that it's actually 100 percent real it's from animals it's from something else here worldly from this earth and mainly from either frogs or toads or birds or other type of mammals and animals that end up either eating things or regurgitating things or maybe in some cases even um, um, as excrement, whatever comes out that they're essentially no longer able to eat ends up being this type of star jelly. It ends up being either stuff that's associated with material from other animals that they can't eat, such as glands, or it's stuff that their own bodies create, and then it's just either um, coming out from their mouth or, again, as excrement, and it ends up being misinterpreted as this star jelly. So many explanations, so many avenues that it could be, but again, no one seems to have a concrete answer. But I will give this, this is some of the most notable examples when it comes to this type of stuff, um, as far as the star jelly, the stuff that really, really stood out. For example, there was in, on November 11th, 1846, a strange luminous object that was about four feet in diameter there in Lowville, New York. In fact, what made it very distinct was that it was very foul smelling. And of course, it ended up disappearing afterward whenever anyone tried to examine it. And then there was another encounter, this time at policemen back in the 1950s there in Philadelphia. They stated they discovered something that was quivering and it was a jelly-like substance, and it was actually six feet in diameter and one foot thick, right in the center. Very large. That was the one I was describing earlier uh, in the video here as far as it being a uh, very large star jelly encounter. In fact, it ended up being the inspiration for the 1958 movie, The Blob. And then also here in Texas in 1979, there were these purple globs of star jelly that were found and this was shortly after a meteor shower that was known as the Perseid meteor shower. But a closer examination reveals that it could have actually come from a compound. Like there was a nearby location that apparently made batteries and some of the production in that it caused a purplish compound to be created as an after effect. And so people might have been tying that to it. But how it ended up on someone's lawn is, again, another idea um, that can't be answered directly. And then there's more examples with regards to what this thing was. There's one that was encountered there in Oakville, 
Washington. This one, though, actually fell more as a rain compound. So in other words, it wasn't just one blob or a small amount of blobs. It was actually raining down when it came to this star jelly. And then also there was this blue set of star jellies that were found most recently in January 2012. This was in a place called Dorset. Um, this was, again, just another mysterious thing that ended up being almost like a shower of sorts, but it came from hail in this case. So very, very fascinating stuff. But again, the list goes on and on as to what the encounters are and then also what it could be when it comes to this star jelly. Honestly, though, looking at all this information, and I think um, in my case, I'll give my opinion at least, I could be wrong, but still, I think it has to do more than the lines of it coming mainly from animals. I mean, you have animals out there that just are in such abundance, whether they're living in the city or living out there in the wild, you'll see animals like birds and then frogs and so on, like everywhere. And of course, they'll all be eating. And of course, they'll either be eating plants or they'll be eating other animals as well. And so all that stuff that comes out from them, whether they're regurgitating or again, doing something on lines of excrement can all come in and all come out and look mysterious like this, especially when rainfall occurs or when there's other things that are mixed there, whether it's in the city and so on, other type of chem chemicals that are found there. But yeah, all that stuff happens. And I think it just gets misinterpreted as it being star jelly. And then there's this other factor of it being another natural effect. And that's from being slime. Uh, there's always going to be mold. There's always going to be slime that comes out as well. Um, there's the notion that it's uh, something more scientific called the Gnostic, if I'm not mistaken, which is normally found like in the bottom of lakes and springs or next to soil that's considered wet. And then there's finally the, another term that's called slime mold. There's actually about over 900 species of slime mold within the world. So any one of those could be misinterpreted as star jelly. And those type of slime mold come in so many variations to so many colors, so many textures, so many compositions, how they look like as well. The sizes range too. Again, all of that could just be misinterpreted, but I could be wrong. They could still be something else in terms of it being extraterrestrial, coming from outer space, coming from a meteor, anything along those lines. But what do you guys think? Let me know what your comments are below. I'd love to hear it. Um, if you have any personal experience when it comes to coming across this star jelly, let's say at your home in the grass or maybe somewhere out there uh, in the forest or anywhere else, uh, love to hear what your comments are. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.